comments. Okay. Okay. Okay, so just whatever, all right. Okay. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Mythophiles, where we are fans of stories of all kinds. I am Duncan Gale. I am Cody Decker. And today we are going to be talking about the novel kindred by octavia butler here and um yeah so i think we're probably mostly going to just be talking about the novel although we might talk a little bit about the uh the new um the new tv series that is based upon the novel but um yeah so i guess you know here on mythophiles uh we oftentimes try to be a little a little funny at times we we try to inject some humor into our discussions you know cody and i actually did used to be uh professional stand-up comedians uh professional unpaid stand-up comedians yeah uh but we uh we, we gave of, up that night yeah of the higher of the unpaid comedians we were certainly about to be paid we were yeah we were definitely <laughs> definitely up there just 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 below paid uh the yeah the paid margin uh, but yeah, you know, I, I just mentioned all of that because today our discussion might not be quite so, quite so humorous as it normally is, given the uh, subject matter that we're going to be talking about. And so, you know, that's just uh, something to sort of get out of the way here at the outset. It's like, OK, let's get our let's get our laughs out of the way before we get into the to, into the more serious stuff, you know. Yeah, because there's certainly jokes that could be made that 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 simply will not be made. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we might talk a little bit about how yeah, in the TV series they they tend to um, they 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 strive for a little more humor at times in a way to varying degrees of success, I would say. But um, okay, so I guess I'll just get into it here. So. Uh, so again, yeah, uh, so the novel, it is uh, Kindred, and this is by uh, Octavia E. Butler. And, um, you know, so um, Octavia Butler is uh, a writer that I only became familiar with uh, probably about five or six years ago. Uh, my girlfriend actually told me uh, about her, and, and that was actually when I first read this book as well. So, so the uh, so yeah, I was rereading it uh, for our discussion today. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, Octavia Butler, a uh, very interesting uh, writer. This is the only one of her books that I've read, but she's written quite a number of things. Uh, she, so yeah, she was a, uh, she was a science fiction writer. Um, she is uh, from uh, Pasadena originally. So yeah. just sort of down the uh, way from us and um I mean, one other thing that I'll sort of say at the outset of our discussion here is that, um, you know, here on Mythophiles, you know, we oftentimes cover a lot of fantasy science fiction type stuff. And it's worth pointing out that fantasy science fiction is one of those genres that um, has traditionally been very white male dominated, I think, both in terms of its... Uh, both in terms of its creators and its and its fandom as well, um, and uh, it's interesting. Yeah, there there are uh, some people of color uh, doing science fiction now, uh, and of course some some women, uh, but it's uh, relatively rare, I think, uh, to find a sort of high profile science fiction or fantasy work work by a woman of color and. Uh, yeah, and so uh, Octavia Butler, yeah, is uh, really. I, I mean, I, and this this may be as much about my my own ignorance as anything, but I'm you know I'm somewhat ashamed to say 
when I think of black female science fiction writers, uh, yeah, Octavia Butler is uh, the only sort of prominent one I know of. I'm sure there are other um, other sort of rising stars in the field today, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and I started getting, you know, on Instagram, the feed I'm getting is for like books that are like hot and trending now. And Olivia Butler is one. She has a, I guess her big popular one is another sci-fi that takes place in the future. Right. And that's like a, that's the hot trending. Like they're saying like, that's like the, like the sci-fi of the year or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, she's, she's known for, I, I mean, this, this may be her most famous sort of, uh, single work but yeah she's known for these other works like the patternist series the xenogenesis uh series and yeah and all of those yeah are are, are series that yeah sort of take place in a futuristic world but uh but this book uh, by contrast uh yeah very much takes place uh within our our regular real world and really might not even um be considered necessarily a science fiction work per se uh because there's not really much science going on here but it's there's definitely fantasy elements i guess you could say i mean there's definitely you know just one sort of key supernatural thing that sort of uh makes the plot go yeah yeah i was ex i saw sci-fi i don't know if it said sci-fi on the book but i saw she was a sci-fi writer and i th this is not sci-fi at all i think this is dark fantasy i guess right. would be the the genre it's certainly uh there is one magical thing that's not mm -hmm. positive right yeah yeah i mean yeah it's interesting yeah on the back of my copy it actually says science fiction slash african-american literature which you know it's uh an interesting uh thing that you don't see that much on on uh too many books but um but yeah, that that's just the way that they classify things, which is oftentimes it's it's a very arbitrary. You know? Yeah, it's an arbitrary thing. But I'm listening to it. I'm like, I'm waiting for the sci-fi explanation because I'm hearing a lot of fantasy. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is this is certainly not um, hard science fiction, as they say. You know, it's not. There's no attempt to sort of explain really what's going on in terms of you know any kind of scientific or really even logical, rational uh, terminology. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just basically things that happen. Um, and there's a sort of logic to the story that sort of finds itself, but it's not, it's not explained in a sort of overall way. But um, yeah, that's how it um, felt like going through it. It was like, oh, because I'm like, okay, what is the point of this story? Like, where's this story going? And, right. it, and it came when I finished, it was like, oh, this was like a, a little snippet experience that like that it's like it gives you a window into this world, right, um, right. mostly just to do that and give you someone who's from a more modern time to go mm -hmm. into it. And it right. wasn't so much. I'm like, it, is there going to be like a war? Is there going to be like a mm -hmm. sci fi blades or no? OK, this was like I'm like, oh, OK, I, I kind of just learned about stuff in right. a very dramatic way. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't like upset, but that's that's just how like I was like learning like what it was. If I read the synopsis, maybe I wouldn't have, you know, I would have. I try not to read synopsises though. Sure. Well, yeah, it's yeah, and it's interesting, yeah, because the way that the story sort of unfolds, yeah, in a way, it's yeah, it's almost sort of better if you know as little as possible because so, sort of the way the story unfolds, there's a sort of dramatic way that it that it happens that's that's very sort of effective. Uh, if you uh, if you don't actually know what's what's coming next necessarily, um, so I guess we can just get into the uh, the basic sort of plot of it. Now, yeah. Unless you have any other introductory remarks. Kindred, more like. Uh... Oh, actually, I know why it's named Kindred. There's a reason it's called Kindred. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times, stories don't have a reason for their name. It just sounds cool, right. but I know why it's named Kindred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um you wanna you wanna share that now or, or oh yeah later? it's a it's yeah. so the I mean that's like the core plot is it's about right. uh someone's ancestor and that's what right. like forces the protagonist in this like very tough situation where 
they stress multiple times. Normally, they would not be putting up with this, but they have to allow certain events to happen in time. Right. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, the basic plot of this uh, novel, yeah. So, I, I mean, this novel was uh, published in uh, 1979, and it, and it takes oh. place uh, a little, uh, it, it, it actually takes place in like 1976, I think is the, is the present day. And that's, that's significant because, um, yeah, actually, at one point, uh, July fourth, nineteen seventy six happens, uh, which is which is the, the bicentennial, and uh, and so um, basically, we have uh, the main character is uh, a woman named uh, Dana, uh, and the story is told from her point of view. This is a first person uh, narrative. And uh, so we have Dana, and then we have uh, her husband, uh, Kevin, who is also a major character in here. And basically, they have uh, just recently moved into uh, a new house together in um, Altadena, which is uh, just just north of Pasadena. Um, and it's always and, weird. I'm like, I've been there. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 cool when when yeah, you you actually know places and books. Um and um yeah so the 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 book interestingly starts with this prologue which kind of puts you right in sort of into into the middle of the action and it turns out that dana basically she has she has lost her arm uh and it turns out that like her arm has somehow been like crushed into the wall of this new house that they've moved into and they go to the hospital about it, and uh, and like nobody ex no nobody believes the actual explanation that she gives for for why that happens or anything, and 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 so basically, you know, that's just a sort of, you know, it's 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 like a kind of teaser scene at the beginning, and and then it's like, okay, well, what's going on, and then you will eventually sort of uh, be led up to to what happens that that, uh, that uh, leads to that event. So a classic intro for a book. I think it did it because right. I was like, okay, like you gave me the hook. And yeah. now, yeah, now no, I'm going to spend the whole book right. figuring it out, which it is like at the very end of it is where you like get that explained. Yeah. There's really not a payoff for that. Yeah. Yeah. Until, until the very end of this. Um, but um, so basically Dana and her, and her uh, husband, Kevin, they're uh, moving their things and they're, they're unpacking their stuff. And then at a certain point, um, things around Dana just sort of vanish, like like her surroundings vanish, and all of a sudden she's in this um, she's in this place where she sees a river, and she sees this child who is drowning in the river, and so she goes out and she uh, picks up this this kid and and brings him back. Uh, this little red-haired kid, and uh, and she finds that the kid is not breathing, and so she starts administering CPR on the kid. And as she's doing that, this other woman with red hair, presumably the kid's mother, comes, and she's like shocked at, at what's happening. She can't can't believe what's what's happening, uh, and and she like tries tries to sort of interfere with what Dana is doing with the CPR, and and Dana just like pushes her away and is just concerned with with reviving this kid and she eventually does um and then um yeah the woman is still just the, yeah the other woman is just sort of shocked and staring at her and then this other guy comes up and points a gun at dana and uh dana gets <laughs> extremely frightened and then she she starts to feel sort of dizzy and her surroundings uh disappear around her again and then she reappears uh, back in back in the house and um so basically like for her she was maybe gone for like at least 10 to 15 minutes or something while this this was happening but her husband kevin like yeah basically sees her in one place and then sees her in another place uh and he's like well, well yeah that just happened within a couple of seconds and and uh, Dana tells her, her her husband what happened, and her husband is sort of like, you know, he's trying to be as sympathetic as possible while, you know, ultimately, you know, 
probably not quite believing her, uh, which is which is probably understandable <laughs> in the in the context. And that's that's one sort of um, I think real strength of this book overall is that it like basically yeah the main sort of yeah whether you, whether you want to call it science fiction or fantasy hook here the uh this that's the only supernatural thing in this book everything else is treated completely naturally and realistically like how would people actually react to this uh and i think yeah, yeah there's um there's some interesting ones because the first one is like how to explain this the second is like oh it's like an izakai except she goes back to the worst possible time to be in and then mm -hmm. she'll show with like injuries throughout the story and people are pretty much like her husband's hitting her and they yeah. don't there's not they're like well there's nothing we can do about people thinking that because right right yeah there's there's all kinds of things that happen as a result of these these uh uh, supernatural events uh, that are impossible to explain other than through those and yeah and they just sort of have to accept yeah most people are, are, are not going to believe us about this uh, so so yeah so basically that's the that's the first uh, time that Dana sort of vanishes and comes back and then um, it happens again uh, and this time she she comes into this bedroom and she sees the same kid that she had uh, rescued uh, earlier. The kid's a little bit older now, and now uh, it, she's she's in his bedroom and his his the curtains in his bedroom are on fire. Uh, and it turns out the kid has has like set them on fire, uh, but you know just sort of stupid kid stuff uh and and so she so she throws the curtains out the window and then she then she sort of talks to the kid and yeah and so at this point we start to sort of find out a little bit more of what's going on here because dana notices that this kid refers to her with the n-word uh and uh yeah and, and you know it's worth mentioning yeah if i haven't already yeah yeah the, the the main character the protagonist of this novel dana is 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 black uh and um and so yeah the kid rufus is his name by the way um he he refers to her with the, with the n-word and, and she's like please please don't please don't refer to me that way and then he refers to other black people using the n-word and she's like well, no, no i told you not to do that and he's like I wasn't talking about you, uh, and 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 so Dana starts to notice this kid is very casual with his use of this word, <laughs> and so and and so basically this is this is this is when things sort of start to unfold because uh, she she finds out that she's in a place that's near Baltimore, and and at first she's like, okay, well, I, yeah, I actually have some family in, in Baltimore, so maybe I can I can go and visit them and get some help from them. Uh, but then she starts to get this sort of sinking feeling when she notices this, the way that this kid talks. And she's like, what, what year is it? Uh, and eventually the kid tells her that, uh, yeah, it is the year 1815. Uh, and so this is basically sort of when we start to find out that, yeah, when Dana vanishes from where she is and goes to this other place, she is going back in time to a plantation in Maryland uh, in the early 1800s. And basically throughout the novel, yeah, I mean, and, and, and the novel is very sort of uh, deliberately uh, structured um, where there are these uh, different sections. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking at here. It says the, 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 the uh, river, the fire, the fall, the fight, the storm, and the rope, those are the, six sections of this novel and those correspond to the the six different times that she basically goes back in time uh to this place and it turns out yeah they uh, sort of through a, a sort of reasoning process that she goes through partly on her own but also partly with with her husband kevin um they sort of figure out okay well Basically, every time she goes back in time, it's because this kid, Rufus, 
uh, his life is threatened in some way uh, if, and uh, he gets scared and somehow Rufus is sort of unintentionally sort of calling Dana to him. And so that's how she comes back in time. And then the way that she leaves is basically when Dana feels scared for her own life, that that initiates the uh, her basically coming back into into the present time. And so, which uh, uh, is interesting because I have seen this came after this was written. I'm not saying there. I, I have seen this in another story in which uh, it called Bright Blade, and it's almost the. Um, a guy gets like taken into this world whenever people are in danger in this fantasy world. Mm-hmm. And he's a British bouncer and yeah. he fights elves and stuff. And anytime he's about to die or he dies, he just wait, he just goes back. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of comparing it to that structure for a bit in my head. Um, right. Uh, she's not really, which it's also, uh, everything is so believable in here. I was expecting the story to take uh, a direction with like, her talking to the uh, Rufus mm-hmm. and it was actually very like no you can't uh here's how people were uh and then she right. she's kind of obvious and that's the other thing is you wouldn't it's like oh yeah when your life's in danger you'll go back it's still hard to like choose to do stuff like that even if you know oh, you'll sure. wake so it is still like because it's like, well, this time might not be, and then we, I, I still don't know the rules. So it's like I'm stuck here until something happens, right? And I think in almost every case, with with one with one notable exception, every time that she goes back to the present time, it's because of a sequence of events that is is not not within her control. That yeah, no, it's like she she gets she gets attacked in some way or or something happens that that makes her very scared uh and so she she goes back in time uh or back back to the future Uh, back to the future uh yeah this is Um, they're rebooting it that's right (laughs) um but yeah and so basically what what i've just described with that yeah i mean what what we've just been talking about here this is this is really all we get in terms of the why and the how of the time travel. It's somehow uh, this kid is calling Dana to him whenever he's he's threatened. And then when Dana herself feels threatened, she goes back. That's that's all we get. We don't get any other sort of like, you know, some omniscient being says, no, I have been doing this to help, uh, you know, resolve the time stream or anything yeah we get we get nothing about that that's I was, that's just yeah i was kind of expecting like, okay is he going to do some sort of ritual to like right. uh to be like oh and and your kin must save me should my life be in danger um yeah i wasn't like upset that there wasn't like a concrete answer because it was right. more fantasy type but i was like oh there's no real explanation for why it's happening so right, i was a right. little disappointed that like i just like knowing answers so yeah i mean there's no yeah there's no sort of overarching explanation there's there's just enough explanation to you know get you to continue to be interested in the story but but yeah but yeah no more than that which again yeah to to tip my hand, uh, you know, I, I think that's one of the real kind of strengths of this of this novel is that it gives you just ju- just enough that you need no more. Uh, yeah, I think there's a sort of um, there's a unique kind of aesthetic going on there where it's very kind of minimal. It's just yeah. And what else is it offers more explanation than most Isekai does because it even it offers at the very okay. least she's being summoned. And, right, and the, right. I don't know if this is the Isekai genre, but it fits that thing where someone's like walking down the street and now they're in a different world. And they do give you an answer, which most don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. So basically, you know, the, yeah, the uh, the arrest of this novel is is basically, uh, yeah, it chronicles the the series of um 
times. Yeah. And, and again, yeah, it's only, it's only six times. Yeah. That she, that she goes back in time to help save this, this kid. And, and eventually, uh, yeah, every time that she goes back, you know, a, 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 um, a number of, you know, years or at least months have passed, uh, back in, um, back in Maryland in, in the early 1800s, whereas only hours or at most a couple of days pass in the, uh, in the present day. So, so there's, a, there's an interesting kind of you know, difference in the way time is progressing in the present versus how it does in the past and how sort of, um, yeah, she, uh, she mentions, yeah, toward, towards the beginning of the novel, she says, I lost a year of my life she says uh and it's and it's interesting yeah because it's like she she goes back in time and she's there yeah and one there, there's at least one time she goes back and she's back for like at least eight months i think and then when she comes back to the present again she's yeah she's only been gone for like maybe an hour or something and so it's yeah and, and I, so it's I thought like, yeah. there was one time where like you like they were like watching mm -hmm. and then like, you were gone for like 10 seconds or something right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um and so basically aside from the uh from the characters that uh i've already mentioned here yeah i mean dana her husband kevin and rufus these are really the sort of main characters but uh in addition to that we also have rufus's parents uh his uh, his father, who is uh, a very unsympathetic character, uh, although um, as Dana comes to realize at a certain point, she realizes well he's really not that bad of a guy for the time period he's living in. Uh, he's just a sort of regular plantation owner uh, doing the things that he needs to do. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so he is he is one character. Yeah, I mean it's. It's hard to say who the main villain of this novel is, uh, if, the, if there even is one. Uh, the villain is just uh, the antebellum South in general, I guess, uh, maybe. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, yeah, the ultimate threat. Uh, I, I did like that that was, that was the, the big issue, is, it, you know, it was like, she, like, knows, like, self-defense, which I always like that idea of, like, if someone's self-defense now, you go back in time, would they, like, be, like, would everyone be, like, John Wicking everyone? Um, but right, she's just right. like, I, you know, it, it's like one, I don't know if I can just kill someone in, in pastime and I normally would this guy, but right. things won't necessarily be better if he dies because right. this is there, this is the situation will get worse if everyone is like then dispersed out to other, um, plantations. So right. maybe I can try right. to talk to them and that way but there's not right. an easy well, yeah. answer yeah yeah and that's 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 good that you brought that up yeah so 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 that's um to go back to the to the title of this book yeah i mean that's that's the real sort of um i guess overall mission as far as dana understands it is that yeah when she um uh, there, there are certain things that she overhears the first couple of times that she goes back in time and then she she starts to put it together oh yeah so the so the last name of these people was was Waylon and she remembers this old family bible that she has and there were the names of like uh people in her family going back many generations and she eventually sort of pieces it together okay i think that um i think that this kid rufus Waylon is actually yeah, my my ancestor in some way, and he is going to basically initiate my family line. And uh, of course, you know, it, we 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 know that it's. I, I mean, he is a uh, white child of a plantation owner who will eventually be a plantation owner himself. He has slaves. Dana is black, so obviously, it's going to be a relationship that he has with the with a slave or, uh, on on his plantation, probably, and. Um, and so that's a sort of, you know, dark, tragic thing in the background, but, but it also sort of brings about 
the the family line that that Dana will uh, be be part of, and so she realizes that she has to sort of make sure that this thing happens so that she will exist eventually. Um, which is, uh, you know, that's the. Um, I think in I think in a lot of ways this is this is very different from um, a lot of other sort of traditional time travel stories, but but that's that's one way in which it sort of um, uh, draws upon so, some of the main themes is that it's like okay, there's this thing that needs to happen in order for me to me to exist, but that gets into all sorts of weird paradoxes like okay, well, but but you do exist. So yes. clearly that thing that needs to happen has happened. So it's not like you need to bring it about in order for it to happen. It just is going to happen anyway. But, you know, there's, there's uh, at points in this narrative, there, there, there are reasons to think, oh, well, yeah, maybe it won't happen. Yeah, maybe uh, the uh, people will get so, sold away to other plantations and, and yeah, yeah, and it won't actually happen. So that's sort of, that's sort of the kind of um, background conflict, but the real overall conflict in this novel is just Dana existing in this society and being able to survive and and not get, uh, I guess, injured or completely traumatized in the process. But arguably, that 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 actually does happen uh in some ways anyway but uh, yeah, yeah it's i i've also never seen that um dynamic where you need to go back in time and protect your ancestor but you won't like your ancestor uh it, right it's, it's, yeah yeah it's it's not it, they're like a one of the worst people ever but yeah if you don't you're gonna you're you're gonna die right. so yeah it's like in back yeah, to the future right. it was like you're out but your dad's lame it's um right you need to make him cool you know? <laughs> and it, it, i guess it's a it's a spin on that she is trying to make him cool in a more broad right, sense right. um right yeah that's true yeah yeah i mean that's that's one of the sort of recurring themes of this novel is that yeah dana really does come to uh care about this kid rufus quite a bit and partly because uh he is he is her ancestor uh and so and so uh she recognizes yeah he is her her her, her kindred and so and so uh she needs to care for him for that reason but um but also she realizes oh yeah maybe i can influence this kid in some way maybe i can implant some sort of more modern enlightened ideas in his head so that by the time he becomes the uh master of this plantation he will uh, run it in a more uh, humane way, and that uh, than, than his father does. Yeah, and throughout the story, there is like, especially in the beginning, you're like, oh, like, because he he starts being more, you know, receptive of like what she says, and right. it's like, oh yeah, he's friends with one of the slaves. So you're like, okay, right. so there, so uh, I, I, the big tension throughout the story is, is he going to make a change, right. and right. and mm -hmm. you know, what is she going to have to do to like get through to him? And then also she has to make sure he doesn't die. And those are all right, the, right. and you, and because it's like, okay, you're going to be gone for, you're going to come back after another couple of years or a couple of months when his life's in danger again. And then what's, what, what have you changed in his personality? Right, and right. yeah, so that, 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 that's the spoiler uh, event is what happens with him throughout the story. Right. Right. Uh, but you know, if you, if you're reading this like 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 I did, having already watched certain things like like Roots or like uh, Twelve Years a Slave, uh, you may um, you may not be reading it with 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 as optimistic of a of a view of things as uh, yeah. You know. I didn't I didn't watch those movies, yeah. so I'm like, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Is he gonna? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna. You were gonna. Mm -hmm. All right, we're and then they're gonna go back in time. They're gonna end it. They're gonna end slavery earlier. That's just gonna happen. I'm like, yeah, because I, yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing, yeah. I mean, in particular, in uh, in Roots, yeah, yeah. One thing that I remember a lot from from watching that is that, yeah, you do see, like, the white children being friends with the slaves as 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 children, but then, 
there is a certain point where things turn around and and people have to sort of learn their place and there's yeah and that can yeah it's it's very it's very upsetting the way that the way that it's portrayed in roots yeah um but um and it's also upsetting here and this is uh i mean is, i think yeah. they showed a hearty amount of the things that happened mm -hmm. um and the, the, that's when i realized like oh that's what this story is about is sort of right being a an excuse for a modern view into that where especially someone uh who like has to deal with it but like uh you know you can go back into your modern times and you can heal you can get aspirin uh right and then just remembering that yeah that's not how it worked back then for everyone right right yeah and and also about how you know if you were a modern person going back in time uh to this period in some ways you have huge advantages over over the people in that time uh you know you know i mean like you 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 would certainly know a lot more about about certain things than these people would but in terms of more practical advantages yeah all of that stuff may not necessarily help you that's that, that's another thing that that sort of recurs is that yeah there are times where dana is sort of optimistic about her um her sort of, you know, intelligence uh, related to related to other people, but it still can't really help her, but so much. Um, I mean, it's uh, you know, to make a um, reference to a to a much uh, more lighthearted work. You know, I mean, it's 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 kind of like uh, in the movie Idiocracy. If you if you have have you have have you uh, seen that movie? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I've seen that one for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where like you know, Luke Wilson wakes up, and everybody in the world is stupid. He's the smartest person in the world, but still, the the sort of uh, overall structural institutions of that world are still such that he can't really fight against <laughs> it. But so much, and you know, uh, <laughs> I don't. That's that's yeah. what happens here. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's definitely world. what happens here as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I did like the depictions of um her because I I like that too. It's like you have a basic knowledge of stuff, and so like to them she's like a medicine. They're like, oh yeah, you can like heal anyone, and it becomes like just like knowing basic metal and even knowing what bacteria and like how she tries. She like starts learning how to communicate that to them because like I'm not right, gonna right. bother explaining what malaria is. So right, right. I yeah, I'm not gonna bother explaining the germ theory of disease <laughs> to these people. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's probably too much, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I like she's like, okay, oh, that's the, the name you use for that. Okay, yeah. Well, it comes from these things. So don't let you know, try to avoid that. Uh right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's one big thing that she notices is yeah, yeah. Whenever these people call in the doctor, it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the way that medicine was practiced in the early eighteen hundreds, yeah, it wasn't wasn't much different from you know medieval times and in a lot of ways like the doctor will just like bleed somebody to to reduce down their fever and I mean, stuff and it's like, you oh, look man. you look back at time it's like the difference between doctors and just serial killers is so low where this is like they would just show up <laughs> in towns and be like here's what we do well st i'm gonna right. stick leeches on you and i'm gonna saw your yeah. leg off because that's your bad leg and mm -hmm. the different i mean that the and like is there like a gene that like and now we have enough for them to actually be able to do stuff but like they were just these insane people that were like right. i'm gonna heal i'm a doctor and that's yeah so a modern person 200 years ago is like right. <laughs> medicine took a long time to be beyond the reach of a modern person right right yeah yeah and it's interesting how yeah i mean dana yeah is not yeah, she does not have any medical training at all, but it's just, yeah, just through sort of comments and stuff that she's picked up in the 1970s of just watching other people, maybe watching TV or movies. She knows way more than a doctor in the early 1800s. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah that, that's the kind of stuff that I, I like. And what it was, it was all like interesting. And, and also because she was a writer and so was her husband. So it's like, oh, right. I kind of. It was a, that's a neat little uh, explanation. Where it's like, oh, I kind of know a lot of things because I was researching this. I was like watching this show and right, right. 
Mm-hmm. And also, yeah, I, I think, didn't they mention, like, oh, yeah, this is a really good doctor. You can saw someone's leg off in, like, no time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, like, the yeah. best doctor very, we have. Very, very um, um, efficient, yeah. Um, Which I yeah. would I, I would prefer the fast leg sawer over the slow ones, but it's still, it's it's not good. Either way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that would be preferable. Yeah, yeah um but um yeah so um i guess we can uh get into more sort of uh detailed stuff about the plot and and into spoiler territory and stuff but uh before we do that we have some we have some comments uh yeah so you may rem- know this guy from the weepsy boys the guy that does the thumbnails for us uh, mm-hmm. specifically both yes. um Cody looks like an indie badass. Nice thumbnail, gentlemen. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that means. Uh, indie. I'm certainly um, indie. Indie, indie badass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think. I think in that episode. Yeah. Yeah. You were like wearing, wearing that coat. Yeah. Yeah. And you. Were, oh yeah, that's my my indie coat. Was, I was almost. Yeah. I was learning guitar, so mm-hmm. that's. Uh, I yeah. gave up because I'm not musically uh, able to. <laughs> um. That that's the uh the top comment. Okay. Uh, Tech New Tango says I feel like the siren calls were a good narrative for s- substitute for a look. We can talk to fish to focus on. You really made it feel different from Aquaman. That's in Black Panther too. I may have read that, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, if we did a bl- we do movie discussions by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, you can talk to fish, which is a new thing as far as I know. Oh, okay. Um, wait. Uh, the uh, the uh, submariner can talk to fish, or yeah, in in the movie they can talk to fish, yeah. and I guess mammals because they can talk to whales too. Right, right, okay. Which, uh, speaking of 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 whales, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my ex wife, uh, I, I, uh, uh, <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> Speaking can... of whales, Brendan Fraser. Uh, yeah, I, maybe, I'm rooting maybe, for. Him. Maybe we'll uh, cover that. I'm rooting for that guy. I'll watch his. I've never rooted for like a celebrity as much as I am for Brendan Fraser. Yeah, he's got he's got uh, a ton of uh, online support. Yeah, it seems like uh, yeah, people really want him to succeed. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of succeed. Hmm. How about Seed, which is what the South tried to do? Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, okay. So, basically, yeah the um, the rest of this novel, yeah, again, yeah, it's about all of the different times that Dana goes back and basically how she sees time progress and. Uh, Basically, yeah, spoiler alert, how she she sees that her efforts to make Rufus into a good person uh, fail, uh, ultimately. Yeah, see, uh, the yeah. first time it happens, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. he maybe his, not his heart or brain is necessarily in the right place, but mm-hmm. he's trying to follow these guidelines, but like, oh, but the times of, of here you know, it, it's being all filtered through like his society. And I'm like, right. And, and, and ultimately, yeah, I mean, you have to remember that, you know, I, I mean, she's there for a certain period of time every time she goes back, but the percentage of time that she's really in this kid's life is very small. It's just, so, so, I mean, it's, it's just like, you know, if you, if you had the experience of, Oh yeah, you know every every couple of years, this magical being uh, from the future comes to me and tries to uh, educate me about things, and then they disappear, and I don't see him again for a number of years. How much influence would that person really have on your life ultimately? You know, uh, if they if they weren't there all the time, and so, you know, so that's basically sort of the the hard truth that. Um, that this book sort of puts forward is that yeah i mean it's it's nice to think that that dana could have some influence but the institutional uh pressures are just are just too much and um, she does have 
some influence enough for me to keep thinking okay the next time they, things are going to be better um the the first time right. i i kind of got the the hint that this isn't a happy story was mm-hmm. when she's like okay yeah don't use that word it's offensive uh the narration uh all, i listened to the audiobook i think the 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 audio narrator did a really good job especially with accents um mm-hmm. there's one scene where a character another character is stuck in time and mm-hmm. um she just does them with like an accent from from the south. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and that was like that was a really nice touch I liked. Um, I'll pull up their name when I can get it. But um, okay. When she's like, "Don't use that word," you know. Oh, that's oh, that's Alice, your friend. You know, maybe you can be nicer. And then the next time she sees him, his life's in danger because he's being beaten to death by um Alice's yeah, by the by yeah by Alice's husband. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, what could have happened here? um right the worst yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i was i was trailing off okay well well, yeah 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 so the the yeah the uh the 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 character of alice is probably the other sort of main character yeah that we should should sort of talk about at least a little bit yeah so so alice it uh dana basically figures out that alice is basically her her other ancestor and so basically uh rufus and alice getting together is what is going to um initiate the the line that uh that that, that will produce dana um eventually now yeah the problem is is that yeah i mean yeah alice is basically um is initially somebody who is not who is not a slave yeah she's she's born free i, I believe and, and and she's just sort of somebody that's that's around the plantation and rufus just sort of plays with her as a kid and so they're like childhood friends and then um eventually alice gets married to uh to to a slave uh and so that's that's her husband but rufus becomes more interested her in interested in her in more more romantic ways as he as he gets older and alice is really not not interested in him that way but obviously rufus is a white man a a, a rich white man who feels that he's entitled to her regardless of whether uh she wants him or not and so um and so that basically initiates a conflict and uh alice and her husband run away and they're caught her husband is brutally uh punished and is sold away and alice is basically bought by rufus and so and, and so basically alice becomes a slave on the plantation and uh and alice is very uh is very beaten up when when rufus um buys her and and sort of Ru- rufus but 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 really dana helps to sort of nurse alice back to health um and there's a sort of alice is sort of so injured and so sort of out of it that that she kind of doesn't even kind of remember what her life is and so um and so there's a lot of sort of uh uncomfortable stuff about how like rufus is sort of like oh well she's so she's so sort of out of it that maybe she'll you know have me and she'll she'll want me and and uh so that's that's sort of progressively how rufus becomes a much much less sympathetic character as the story progresses Um, every every event i'm like uh he just keeps not making the um the good decision and he and always just showing because he's like oh she will to rest she'll stay in my room and dana has to be like right. no no she won't um that's not gonna happen um because we mm-hmm. i know what you're gonna do and uh right. and he does listen to ours so i'm like okay is there hope here um which just real quick it was narrated by kim stoughton uh she did a okay. audiobook i she did a, she did a really good job narrating uh okay it's, uh, cool. it, the uh the thing um but yeah, Rufus, uh, yeah, he's infatuated with Alice, and it starts getting brought up that Alice and Dana will go on alike because right. they're kin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's definitely a big, um, big sort of uh, recurring theme. Yeah, and uh, eventually, it comes to the point where um, Rufus reveals that he basically sort of thinks of Alice and dana as one person 
and it's like Alice is like the person that he's romantically interested in, and then Dana is like the 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 more um, I guess platonic version of her, but 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 that he also likes. Um, and is yeah, I mean, I mean, it's 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 really weird and and uncomfortable and disturbing. Uh, I mean, but but it's also very effective at sort of getting into the mindset of the way that you know white plantation owners thought of of black people at the time. It's like, yeah, I mean, Rufus comes like somewhat close to to kind of thinking of Dana as being a human being but not not still not really uh i mean yeah, she's, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was the uh, like you get into his mind and from his perspective he's being really chill about everything happening right mm -hmm. from his perspective oh, yeah. he's like i'm put up with a lot and like he'll even like th like she'll start insulting him and he'll be like Shh, you're not like don't let if other people hear you say that i have to punish you and i'm like right 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 and and people and other people say like oh of the plantations this is i guess you know it's not the worst one so right. you know he's which he fuels more into him being like yeah look i don't beat them to death i you know i'm right. not a monster uh and and right. i love right. her i love that woman i do anything for her mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's just what he would do is not good his anything isn't great but yeah it's it's uh it is interesting seeing how he doesn't he never thinks he's the bad guy, which you know no one oh, does. Oh sure, yeah. Um right, that right. was a real interesting perspective. The only other time I have seen that kind of dynamic shown was in Don Quixote, one of the um mm -hmm. the little side stories in it uh -huh. involves someone in a in a very similar situation, just showing how it's like, yeah, there's nothing you can do. It's a baron uh that barged into my home. I don't have a say in what happens. Uh right, right. Yeah, it's it's always uh, this was uh, definitely darker uh, than mm -hmm. in the classic comedy, but uh, yeah, right. Um, yeah, another thing I haven't mentioned yet that I think is worth mentioning is that during one of the times that Dana goes back in time, her husband Kevin grabs hold of her, and so he ends up going back in time as well. So her husband Kevin is white. And so that sets up another sort of interesting dynamic where on the one hand, um, there's a sort of advantage to her going back in time with her husband, Kevin, because Kevin can kind of like protect her. Uh, but the way that he does that is that he has to pretend that she is his slave. And that leads into a lot of uh, very sort of uncomfortable uh, things that have to happen and basically how, you know, they both have to sort of exist in this horrible society. And he obviously has a much higher, freer position in it than, than she does, but they have to sort of figure out how to, how to sort of make things work. Um, and uh, yeah, so I thought, I thought that 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 dynamic, uh, yeah, was was especially interesting. Um, and what basically happens is that Dana goes back to the present and leaves Kevin behind. And so that's sort of another one of the sort of big, big you know, sort of conflicts. Or I mean, I mean, that really raises the stakes. Is that at a, at a certain point, Dana? is scared that she's never going to see her husband again because he's just stranded back in the early 1800s. And um, they've established yeah. that, like, you know, a second here is, you know, a day there. So right. now she's just back being, like, just waiting to be taken back to try to find him. And it could be years, but and in fact, it mm -hmm. does be, end up being, like, five years mm -hmm. uh, in past time. Right. And right. now it's, like, where how do you find someone five years like in that time like where could he possibly gone you, right, you know right. where's what are the resources for tracking someone down especially when you don't have uh rights so mm -hmm. that yeah. that is a it's a it is a neat midpoint turn to keep you still interested because now it's like well now you have to do this on top of surviving and making sure this guy survives and trying oh, to yeah. improve things for everyone back then as best you can right right Oh yeah, yeah. So so yeah, definitely yeah, by the by by the midpoint of this novel, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff going on. 
Um, but yeah, and um, you know, when she when she goes back again, um, yeah, it, it it takes a while, but 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 she is she is eventually re reunited with Kevin, and 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 they do come back to the present. But that that is uh, yeah, pretty that that was pretty fascinating because yeah, I, I mean, Kevin is basically like he has lived in the 1800s for like yeah five years, yeah something like that, and he clearly has this like severe PTSD that he may never completely get over. Uh, and, and so that was, that was an interesting aspect of this as well is that, yeah, I mean, Octavia Butler, I think does a good job of showing how, yeah, I mean, to live in the early 1800s, even for a white man, uh, you know, who, and, you know, presumably the only reason that he even survived that long, yeah, was because he was, he was a white man. Um, that, I mean, that would be tremendously scarring and, uh, and, uh, horrific, uh, you know, all, all, and, and again, yeah, I think that that's, that's another way in which this novel shows the really sort of less is more approach. Like you don't hear much about what he went through. He just, he just gives a couple of like brief references. He's like, Oh, the, uh, the, the places that I, that I stayed in, you, you, you wouldn't even imagine, you, you know? And so, and so we just get some sort of vague references to, to the stuff that he, he had to go through. Yeah, and uh, he yeah. he mentions he like he tried helping people that he could, right? And it, he's even like, like he's not even used to saying that out loud that he's been helping people because he's like, you have no right. idea. Like it's like I he said to keep that a secret, and he has he has to like, you know, you're like, oh, presumably he had to start like blending in. So mm -hmm. you know what that did to him, and he, he still has the accent. It's like I don't know if the book mentions that, but in the audiobook, uh, oh yeah, he t he takes yeah, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. In the book, at one point, yeah, she says that she that he has just the f faintest tinge of a tinge of a southern accent that yeah that most people wouldn't wouldn't uh, notice, but uh, she does. Yeah, mm. yeah. And when he gets back, it is like I just need to be alone for right, right, a little bit. <laughs> and he, yeah. you know, he's very like fidgety and angry. And you're like, yeah, he, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Uh, that that's a whole other story that happened. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a big part of what happens. But um, yeah, so I mean, I guess can we get can we get into like how how the, how the book ends at this point? I mean, is that is that too much spoiler? Or, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. So that's that's the journey, you know, back in time. Her husband gets stuck in time, and then right. she keeps getting taken back. What's Rufus doing now? His family keeps not um, being appreciative of her saving his life. Right. You know, and it, like it keeps uh being more and more apparent that yeah you're not going to be able to change the way things are right, right. That, that's yeah. the big chunk yeah i mean i think yeah again the attitude that these people take to dana is very fascinating because there are points in the novel where they actually they, they actually are are eyewitnesses to seeing her disappear and uh and so there's no way that they can deny, you know, that that something is going on here. That, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, especially yeah, Rufus's father is just like I mean, he's just like sort of um, a little bit sort of afraid of her, and that's that's maybe the only thing that kind of protects her from him in that way. But but he's he also yeah clearly does not does not like her, and he's and he's he sort of resents the fact that he's he's afraid of this of this black woman that has these you know magical powers but um would well, yeah, yeah. That, that's the only part that I'm, is that i'm like that's a little odd which is like people like the other slaves see her do it too mm -hmm. and you know the, every now and then someone mentioned like if i didn't see you you know teleport before my eyes and right. i know i wanted to believe that also yeah you don't age and you just pop up throughout all these years everyone's pretty like it's it's sort of like trivia for them that she does that um right and then in modern and I, I like that thing in the modern times uh because mm -hmm. at one point she uh was like i need a i'm gonna put my own life in danger because i just want to get out of here and, right mm -hmm. you know it works and it's like yeah that does work but just keep in mind you can't keep doing that because you know right. i <laughs> kevin's like i'm gonna have to take you to the hospital and right. there's no explanation like you're going to be taken into a psychiatric ward 
Mm -hmm. um, right. Because that's what those are. The, they're meant for, they're not going to believe you. And in fact, don't bring up the, the real reason you did that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. kind of like, okay, so you can't, she can't do it all the time. It was, it was, I, I like, it was a neat little, like, why didn't she do that? Well, she did do it and there's consequences. So, right. Right. Um, but yeah, there's, there is the final time that she goes back in time. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, basically what eventually happens is that, I mean, Rufus and Alice do uh, get together. I mean, you know, I, that's, that's probably not the, not the right way to say it. Uh, it's more like, yeah, I mean, Rufus, Rufus successfully um, rapes Alice and uh, and 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 has her in a um, a very abusive relationship for 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 a while, where she's just very very submissive, uh, and they have um, a number of children together, um, and um, and then yeah, uh, eventually uh, it turns out that Rufus actually actually sells the children away uh which is uh which is a very sort of surprising development and that causes mm -hmm. alice to basically uh take her own life and so the last time that dana um goes back in time uh she um it is basically to sort of prevent rufus from killing himself uh and at that point rufus is just like completely despondent um and he even tries to tries to rape dana and so dana basically ends up killing rufus in self-defense and so that sends her back to the present and that basically sort of you know throughout the novel they sort of speculate like okay how do we stop this from happening how do we stop dana from from, from, from going back in time well 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 we need to sort of um you know uh produce the, the the child that will that will lead to to her um uh, existence but really yeah really ultimately yeah the only thing that stops it is is the death of rufus himself uh and so and and it's it's understandable how how it happens i mean it's it's clearly something that dana does in self-defense but she also sort of realizes that she has a choice whether or not to do it but she she chooses to do it yeah yeah, and the the um the big thing that becomes in the last arc that he's holding over Alice is like I'll sign the I'll sign the uh, the freedom papers for your kids, uh mm -hmm. later though, and then right, right. uh Dana will constantly be like you know are you gonna sign them? You're like I'll, I'm gonna do it. Right, uh, right. He, he's, he's, uh, but uh and then towards the end he's like I didn't do it because I thought well, as soon as I did you wouldn't have a reason not to kill me and she's like, you know, he, yeah yeah there's no reason yeah i don't like you as a person and you're right. like a horrible yeah i would yeah uh, right right so uh also uh from what i remember uh he's like oh i didn't sell them i just told her i did and i sent them to my aunts oh that's right that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and then she's like why wouldn't you tell alice i was like i'm I don't. They got into a fight, so he lied and said that he sold her kids into slavery. Um, right. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah. 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 He. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't actually sell sell, sell yeah his own offspring. Yeah. He just sends them away and yeah and, and just makes it seem as though he did in order to scare Alice into and complying. Yeah. That was the last. Like, oh, is there? <laughs> That was the last time I'm like, okay, is there hope for this guy? Because after that, he's like, oh, you, by the way, you look just like her, and I'm like, ah, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah you guys yeah. just just kill him with mm -hmm. a, with, and then it's it's covered up by another slave, by um, right. by a by oh, a yeah. barn fire. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, ultimately, this is um, this is a very tragic book. I think. Uh, yeah, it ends in it ends in tragedy, but it's but in terms of the story that that is told, it's a it's a very very well told uh, story, uh, very compelling, um, very uh, very upsetting at many points. Uh, the violence in this book is is real. Uh, it's uh, it's graphic. So, you know, I just want to sort of alert people. Yeah, I mean, if you're 
you're at all interested in reading this, there is there is that. Um, but um, yeah, there's but yeah, a, I mean, oh, mm -hmm. there's whipping, and uh, yeah. there are dogs, and mm -hmm. the story also like de by dealing with like the like because she like is the one that does like the treatments for for injuries, mm -hmm. you get more in depth descriptions of what those injuries were like, right. And how most people, I mean, because you didn't, they didn't know what anything was. So they would have gotten like horrible infections and died because there's, they don't get treatment. And even if they did what, like, they don't know what they're doing. So it's, it's pretty graphic in those ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I had, I, I had read this book before. Yeah. And I mean, and as we were preparing for this discussion, yeah, I mean, I didn't get around to, to starting to read this again until two or three days ago but once i did i i got through this book very quickly uh this is uh a very a very fast read it's it's really one of those books that yeah you sort of can't put down once you once you get into it so yeah for for that reason yeah it's very it's very affecting uh yeah it's uh it's a very compelling story but it's also uh very brutal and very very upsetting in a lot of ways uh, as well um, I think it's an eight to ten hour audiobook. Uh, it's divided into five sections, mm -hmm, so it was mm -hmm. pretty easy for me to um to be like, okay, section one. Uh, let me take a little break here. Section two. It was it was it was right. really neat to like be able to just divide it up evenly, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. like yeah. that. Also, yeah, at the end we do find out why the arm thing happened at the end, which is Rufus was right. grabbing her as he was dying. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. So that's. Yeah, so that, that's one more thing that's sort of only very minimally explained is that, yeah, apparently, yeah, part of part of uh, the way that the time travel thing works is that, yeah, if there's somebody holding on to Dana from from that time, yeah, that will somehow affect the way that she she comes back to the present. Yeah. And so basically, yeah, when Rufus is holding on to her in his sort of death grip as as she as she kills him. Um, yeah, that leads to her basically coming back with her arm in the wall, yeah, of of their house, yeah. yeah. And there, there's a little epilogue where they where they go and visit um, mm -hmm. that town in modern times, and yep. uh, they mention the little detail where you know things are different. You know, schools are integrated now, and we right. still get looks from older couples that see us. Yeah, because... yeah, that was a, that was that was a uh, a, a, a good realistic detail yeah the, yeah the, yeah they are still a, still an interracial couple in in the 1970s in america in, in maryland yeah uh, still get some looks yeah yeah uh so yeah that's the uh I don't, that, that covers the whole story uh when i finished it mm -hmm. i uh i was like that's when i like the ending is when i realized what the story was which is a, right. a window into a tragedy uh mm -hmm. And I felt like kind of like you know like I I learned stuff after finishing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a lot of uh, a lot of information. Yeah. A lot of historical information. Yeah. I mean, this is really almost as much a work of historical fiction as it is science fiction or, or fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I was imagining like if this is being read in school. Um, oh yeah. Cause it, cause I'm, I'm, I, cause I'm, I'm comparing it a lot to Huckleberry Finn mm -hmm. in, in my yeah. head, um, which one, not nearly as funny, uh, yeah, but like, cause you know Huckleberry Finn, they're like you know this is like a window into this. It was very specific about capturing the language people used, right. uh, and then this one, it's like, well, here's someone from a more modern time. This was like fifty years ago now um, that it was written. Um, but you have a modern person going back in those times. And I'm like, if you like kid re kids reading this in school, I'm like, this definitely gets um, an experience across more than uh, Huckleberry Finn would. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, so you want to talk at all about the, uh, about the TV show. Did you, did you get a chance to watch any of that or. I didn't watch it okay did you yeah. Watch? um yeah i mean i'll just i'll just talk 
briefly about it. Yeah, I mean, I've I think I've watched. Yeah, the, yeah. So it's a it's an eight episode uh, mini series that's on uh, it's on Hulu now, and um, yeah, and I was, you know, and I I, I basically. Yeah, just finished this book and 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 I was like, okay, well, I'll watch at least the first episode or so and see if see if I can take it. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if this is too faithful of an adaptation, I I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go through this again. But I've found that the the TV show definitely tones things down quite a bit, um, which in a way is understandable. But you know, I'm also you know, I'm also not sure if they maybe just sort of lost their nerve a little bit with with you know portraying portraying this. Uh, but it's interesting because 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 the, the TV show takes place in in more mo modern day. I mean I mean you know this book was written in the 70s, so so yeah I mean this sort of updates that the the TV show takes place in like 2016 is the is the uh, modern day. Um, so. Some of the other main differences is that uh, so so yeah the uh, the main actress that the the plays Dana and uh, Mallory Johnson is her name she she's actually very very uh, good in it uh, yeah and I was I was very impressed with her performance overall but um, so she and Kevin are not married but rather they have just recently met and have just like gone on their first date together and have just hooked up for the first time and then this stuff starts happening so and 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 kevin does go back in time with her but they're not they're not a married couple they, they, they're just two people that are are getting to know each other uh so that's, that's an, an interesting, interesting sort of, choice <laughs> yeah it is it is an interesting choice yeah interesting uh, is, is 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 a word for it yeah um another big difference so they go a lot more into the, into the sort of backstory of Dana in the in the present day and her family background, and initially, yeah, a, as in the book, she says that both of her parents have 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 died. Uh, but what you find out when she's going back in time is that her mother actually went back in time as well, and her mother has been stranded in this same place, and so she meets her mother, and and a big part of the of the uh, TV show is actually her trying to get her mother to come back to the present with her and her mother, you know, having been back there so long that she's sort of uh, established all these networks and connections with with people that she doesn't feel like she can come back. So that's another interesting sort of um, thing that they add. Um, I feel like it not... kind of mud, mud, it, it, it it kind of muddles up the story a little bit. I feel like, uh, but because that that's not a bad idea, but right, it does right. make it a different story. It yeah yeah it does kind of so so yeah I mean if you're interested in this uh, you know yeah just know that there's the novel kindred there's this TV miniseries kindred they bear some relationship to each other but. The TV show is definitely not a straight up, uh, you know, but but by the numbers adaptation, which is which is good in some ways. I feel like because, you know, if if you read a book and you like the book, and then you see something coming out that adapts it, you don't necessarily want thing that just straightforwardly adapts it and and repeats all the same stuff that you saw in the book. You know, you want something that maybe does things a little bit differently. But but this this strays quite a bit, and. Again, I'm six episodes six episodes into this eight episode miniseries, and it doesn't it doesn't even feel like they're going to sort of wrap up completely the story of the novel as it is. I'm not sure if they're going to do a sort of if this is going to be like multiple seasons, if this is going to be like a sort of Handmaid's Tale type thing where like they start with the novel but then they like. Uh, expand it out into a much bigger story or something well but, if uh, they're yeah. including that her mom had that same ability um yeah. is there like yeah like a kindred cinematic universe where then like it's going to be like it's right. going to show her grandmother and then great-grandmother right and then yeah yeah is is the reason she goes back still the same or because why yeah. is her mom yeah yeah, yeah the yeah yeah the uh the the uh, basic reason is is the same yeah yeah for 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 rufus and everything yeah, uh, the reason why her mom goes back 
yeah, at least at the point I'm at, I, yeah, I think it still hasn't been clearly explained why 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 her mom goes back exactly. And if yeah, but it, but it's but her mom goes back to to the same exact place with his family. So presumably it's it's for the same reason. But her mom has her mom has never been able to go back to the future. Uh, that's that's the that's the main difference. Yeah. Mm. As a, yeah, well, I guess it'd be like if her, because I mean, a lot of people's lives are never in danger. Um, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So that that might ultimately, yeah, yeah. And so, and there is a lot more sort of, sort of stuff that's kind of from the book that's in the TV show that's sort of played more for laughs. Like, like at one point, uh, yeah, Dana and and Kevin uh, are are like talking about, oh yeah, so 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 like you only go back to the future when you feel threatened. So like. I don't know. Maybe I could like hire somebody to like try and kill you. She's like, no, don't do that. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and, and it's like, yeah. So there's a scene where they're like trying to figure out, okay, what's a way that I can kind of like scare you to death or something. And it's it's weird. <laughs> yeah, so they add because you're like they made it, it more humorous and I'm like what parts could they have livened up here? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I guess. By having Kevin be more of like a casual dude, it, there's less tension in like, you know. I assume he still gets stuck in the past. Um, well, well, yeah, yeah, and and Kevin is actually focused on a lot more as a character in the mm. in the TV show. He's he's like the sort of co-star of it, uh, and there's a lot more stuff about him, like interacting with. 1800s people and 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 them like saying so where are you from and he's like uh uh well I, i'm from uh i'm from here and, and and he's he's presented as a lot more of a sort of bumbling buffoonish oh, type okay. of yeah. character yeah yeah so um, so that's also where i think a lot of the, the humor comes from. i was gonna say that 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 that's what the book did that surprised me is it didn't make him like a, a bumbling jerk no yeah yeah in the book he's a very he's a very like serious capable character yeah so that's that's a big difference is that his character is almost completely different from the, Steve now, yeah, yeah. the big question what's rufus like in the show rufus yeah yeah rufus is actually um a pretty a pretty faithful adaptation i think so and and, and so far yeah what i've seen he's only he's, he's still only a a uh, young kid and and what i've seen but it's 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 pretty similar yeah you know what? You know what Rufus kind of reminds me of now that you know how they love doing, you know, what Superman, but he's twisted. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they did Brightburn I, was the last movie where they're like, what if Superman was like was like twisted as a kid? And mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah, know, yeah, they do that. They love doing that. And then I guess Rufus is like, what if Huckleberry Finn was t a little twisted? Um, right. <laughs> uh, right. 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 Mm right. -hmm yeah um so yeah i don't i don't really believe in doing like ratings for for books or stories specifically but like how do you rate as an adaption the show i think that's more fair in my head right well um i mean i think as yeah 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 as an adaptation of of the book it um it strays pretty pretty far but it is it is entertaining in in its own right for 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 what it is yeah i mean i've 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 watched yeah uh yeah six episodes just within the last couple of days i, I mean it is it is a very bingeable you know show that you can you can get into uh but in a in a very different way than the book i think it's it's a very different tone there is there is definitely not as much of the sort of in the the book i think does a great job of of presenting how dana is really in constant danger as long as she's in this this past period whereas you really don't get that sense as much in the tv show there's it they, they really sort of tone that down quite a bit um yeah but 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 the tv show is entertaining for what it is but i'm not sure if it's the best overall adaptation of, of of what this this book what 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 what, what that could be yeah okay um so unless we have any more final thoughts we should mention the next two books on the docket okay next two books all right yeah i'm pretty sure it's, we're doing catch 22 
Okay, yeah, yeah, we're doing Catch Twenty Two eventually, but but I I, I think we're maybe going to be doing uh, Unsold first. Oh and right, then, yeah, then Catch Twenty Two. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Unsold, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is a uh, we're going back to fantasy. Uh, it's a yeah. fantasy fighting thing that has a, a couple of unique twists. It, it's one of the mm-hmm. the modern fantasies that's like uh, getting attention. Um, there's that Catch Twenty Two is good. But it's a very, yeah. uh, I would say it's a tougher read. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, uh, yeah, not that, not not the easiest read, but, um, but yeah, interesting, and uh, and again, yeah, we might get a chance to uh, not just talk about that book, but also some of the adaptations as well, which include a movie from the '60s, but also a more recent uh, television show. Yeah, on Hulu. Uh, so, yeah, on Hulu again. If you're yeah, looking so. for it, Catch Twenty Two. I get. I think it's fun. I tell people jokes from it, but I yeah. I told someone a joke of Catch Twenty Two, and they're like, "Oh, should I read it?" I'm like, "I don't know if you should read it, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you like it." But there's funny bits out of it that always like ended up making. I just I I, I take longer breaks in between going back into it than some other mm-hmm. books. And I'm gonna say this: one of my uh, picks down the road is going to be Nightland. Uh, Nightland? A, story, a nightland now here's interest an interesting thing um so it was a 17th century mm-hmm. uh chivalry tale in a lovecraftian world so lovecraftian and also 17th century lovecraft himself reviewed it and he said oh, wow. this is one of the best cosmic horror stories this is one of if not the first example in literature of a chainsaw sword that's how I found out about it as I was trying to find the source. Um, and at the time it was written, the biggest criticism is the language is so poetic and flowery, it's almost impossible to read. That it's a beautiful story. It's an awesome story, but it's kind of a tough read. So there's two versions of this. So there's a okay. there's the original, the author died in World War I because uh, mm-hmm. he was drafted. And then um, years later, decades later it was rewritten in a thing called the story retold and it, okay. it was updated for modern uh audiences and sense and not sensible just like making it literally like listenable and they mention he mentions the love scenes were like really in detail and he toned oh. that down so um okay you can okay. pick which one you want to want to check out but i will be picking a story retold uh that uh okay that he did all right, all right. Uh, have you been so like re- reading anything on your own time that you're planning on putting on the list? Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of other stuff that we might cover in the future, I was thinking maybe of yeah, some more classics like maybe uh, Jane Eyre, uh, something like that. Yeah, uh, and yeah, again, so- that's good. That's got movie adaptations that we can talk about as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, audience, you'll find that this is going to be classics and fantasies as we as we go. Uh, there might be a might be, uh, yeah, more and more of an obvious uh, divergence in the <laughs> in the lines of lines of selections. But uh, that's OK. Variety is the spice of life. Yeah, I like I like reading classics. It's like, you know, I'm like, Good. dang, I'm like smarter now and I'm better than people. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah. You can say that you've read that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There is one interesting point in the uh in the Kindred Kindred uh TV show where um yeah the character of Kevin he overhears people um uh, talking about oh there's a new um there's a new novel coming from England by Jane Austen and he's like oh Pride and Prejudice they're like yes oh you you've read it he's like oh yeah yeah like uh miss mr darcy and stuff and, and it's it's implied that kevin has probably seen one of the one of the film adaptations of oh of Pride and prejudice but but yeah so yeah that's a deep cut <laughs> joke that, he does, that he's like improvising knowing like in a book club where he's pretending right, right, you right, read the exactly. book yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fine you know what i'll check out the show i mean because it is like yeah it's not gonna be accurate, good but yeah. On the other hand, I kind of, you know, I don't need that story to be shot for shot. Um, no, no, yeah, and I think, I think they, you know, there there are arguments to be to be made either way, but 
you know, it 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 it, it may be the right choice that they that they tone down certain things from the book. Uh, okay. What's our what's our closure? What's what's the wacky <laughs> ending based off this story? Right. So, um, yeah, if you ever uh, get whisked back in time, uh, just uh, be sure to keep plenty of supp of uh, supplies with you and keep it strapped to your body at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Bring aspirin and a gun if you go back in time. Right. That's right. Okay. We're 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 leaving. The music is already.